one of the most popular self-defense tools that you should never buy. Don't waste your money on this. You're gonna see these, people talk about these a lot. You see them in a lot of forums, a lot of demonstrations. I know because I get this request all the time. People are asking me constantly, what about the expandable baton for self-defense? It's very effective in self-defense. And it's, the idea comes from, I think, this idea that police officers have been carrying these for a long time and people, groups like Antifa, you've seen lots of pictures of those kinds of people carrying them to get into altercations, do bad things to other people. And so these pop up everywhere and especially this type and quality. And I want to talk about this type and quality specifically. This is some garbage made in a factory, probably in China, and it's drop shipped by some drop shipper on Amazon and they give them false names and descriptions to get them past the sensors because really these are weapons and they're banned in a lot of places. Now let me show you the first reason why this is such an ineffective tool for self-defense. This one in particular, and then I'll talk about expandable batons in general. This one is a very inexpensive one. This, I bought this off of, um, off of Amazon. I got two or three from different uh, drop shippers, different people but they all were about exactly the same. This is made out of plastic. This one does not hit hard at all. It does hit, but about the same amount as a stick that you could pick up. And I would recommend learn how to defend yourself. Good afternoon, David in Newcastle. Learn how to defend yourself with a stick and then sticks are everywhere. So I'm an advocate of learning how to fight with sticks for self-defense. And yes, this is a stick. This is a stick that you can carry. Shouldn't be that easy to close. A stick that you can carry with you. This comes with a carrying case. I'll show you. The carrying case that it came with is also a piece of garbage. Hello, Doug. This is a, just the cheap version of what police officers carry. And look there. You can see. I'm not sure what that says in the Chinese script. Mandarin or Big Five or whatever it is. I think it says, hello, Jimmy. This is some garbage made in a Chinese factory. They stole somebody else's design. <laughs> they didn't pay anybody's trademark and they just started shipping this garbage everywhere. Thank you, Matthew. That's what I think that says in Chinese. I don't know. I don't, I don't read Chinese very well at all, but that's what I think that says. Even this fake piece of military, what would be 550 paracord, I can rip this apart. This has come apart. So the first reason I want you to avoid buying this self-defense tool, and I get this request all the time. You ask me a lot, what about the expandable baton? And I know that you've seen them on Amazon and other shippers. And again, it's just drop ship garbage. The idea is that you would whip this out, it would expand, you'd have a tool to defend yourself. And I'm gonna show you how to use an expandable baton with one that Doug sent me that actually is the real deal, but this is garbage. This is not even as long. Let me show you what the real one looks like. First of all, you can see that the carrying case is made to go on an officer's duty belt. And this would be, would be drawn and quickly snapped out. You can see immediately the difference in the length, right? This, one, this garbage, this piece of uh, Chinese garbage is actually bending there already. And this one, just with a little effort, will close, which means, yeah, and Matthew, as Matthew says, they're illegal in New Jersey. I'm gonna to get to that. They're illegal in so many areas. You cannot carry this unless you're law enforcement. And I'm also gonna tell you that most law enforcement guys I talk to, men and women, have told me up to a week ago, they have these on their belt, but they will not draw it for so many reasons. The majority of which is they don't find them effective in self-defense. I'm gonna talk about why. Now, this, it, this is the, it doesn't come out all the way sometimes. There we go. Even fully extended, you'd see it's not as long. It does, it has almost no power to hit. This is the Monadnock. I think it's the Monadnock. This is made in free China. There's the big difference right there. This is made probably in Wuhan province or Shenzhen where they just close everything down because of the Wuhan virus. This is made in free China, which is Taiwan, the country of China, where all of the free people left after the communists took over. That will do some damage. This will break some bones if you have to use it in self-defense. It's made to be held in one hand or two. 
using it as a striking weapon. And always, I wanted to see, I saw a demonstration today about these different angles of strikes and this reverse strike. I like to point this out all the time. This, if you have the choice to do this or this, this one's always gonna be stronger. When you extend and you come from across the body, you always have a lot more power. So if you need to defend yourself, think about using this technique if you have to. Now with this Monadnock style, I'm not sure if it's Monadnock, actually as I look at it, I don't think it is. But this one is a solid police officer's baton, expandable baton. You would use this with two hands on it to jab, which is very effective, or to thrust coming straight through, striking the body. You would have your hand here coming up a little bit with some room here, and you would use that to punch into ribs coming through. Sometimes I miss it when I don't look at it. And so yes, in that case, if you don't buy the garbage version, if you buy this version, you do have a good self-defense tool that will work. However, you're not likely to be able to buy this unless you're in law enforcement, unless you can go into a law enforcement store, or a uniform shop where they sell gear for police officers. Hand, you're not gonna buy handcuffs from that store. You're not gonna buy a real badge from that store. You have to come in and present your ID as a real law enforcement person, as a police officer or a corrections officer to be able to buy this one. The only thing that you're gonna be able to buy short of that is going to be this garbage expandable baton. So this is the first reason why you should not consider buying one of the most popular self-defense tools on the market that you should avoid is the expandable baton because most of them that you're gonna buy, you're gonna be so disappointed you're gonna get it shipped to your house. They're gonna to lie to you in the description. They'll say whatever you wanna hear, but then when you get it, it's this garbage, plastic, it's gonna break, has no strength. You can't do the techniques I just showed you. Here, you start to hit with any force on this one, this one's just gonna split. And usually, as I've experienced, when things like this split, they slice your hand up. So you're gonna hurt yourself more than you hurt the other person. The only thing you could use this for is if you kept it closed and you were to strike this way, this way, or even like a roll of pennies in your knuckles. But that's not enough to spend seven, 12, 18 bucks for. So I would skip this one here. Now, this, this one, the one that is more effective for self-defense is not as effective as the old style patrol baton, policeman's baton that you would carry if you were in law enforcement, either a riot baton or a police officer's baton, but this does, you can just, you can hear it. I can feel you can hear it. There's so much power that comes into this, this strike because it's so dense. Yeah, Brandon says their spring break is in five days. It's spring break here now, but because this is dense and the way this is made, I think this is also, it's not Monadnock, it's made, it's made by a simpler co uh, company. But again, this you're not going to be able to buy unless you're a law enforcement officer, an LEO, or you have the ability to show that you're in school to be one or something like that, depending on the rules of your state. There are some places where you can carry the expandable baton. There are some, uh, some cities and some states and jurisdictions that have opened up the restriction on it. But if you get stopped with a, at a police, by a police officer and you're in an altercation, or they come up upon a scene and you've used this to defend yourself, then a judge and a jury can very easily say that you were probably carrying this because you wanted to hurt somebody. You were looking for a fight. You were not looking for a fight. That's why you brought your weapon. This becomes a weapon and not a self-defense tool. I like purely self-defense tools, especially non-lethal self-defense tools for a lot of people who don't want a lethal option. And I put a link below. I can't talk about it here. But I put a link below to my favorite, the one that I train people on, and a lot of my students get in person, and the ones that I work with on a, on a um, more intimate basis, use what's called a burn -it. It's the first link below. If you wanna go and take a look and see what that is, it's very interesting, you'll be fascinated by it, like I was at first. Aliante, it's good to see you. But go take a look at that first link below if you wanna see, what I, it's a, and it's more expensive, but it's extremely effective. <laughs> I've, I've, been, I've seen them demonstrated, and I've used them now, and there's, it's extremely effective as a non-lethal self-defense 
option as a non-lethal self-defense tool, and it's purely made for self-defense. So you can say, look, I had this in my car, I had it in the house, I had it with me because I was in an area that I wasn't feeling comfortable with, and they're gonna see it just so differently than this. This has such a negative um, image because of all the videos over the year of police officers just bashing the snot out of people. And like I said before, a lot of police officers will tell you, awkward the cat, good to see you. They don't use this, they'll never pull this out because they don't wanna get seen, they wanna be on a video, the cameras are everywhere, just beating somebody with one of these. They also know that somebody who's full of anger and adrenaline and drugs, they're just gonna walk right through that. They're gonna to have to just beat them with it five, six times, often because they don't have enough training and they're using it incorrectly. Going back to this one, the old style, the police officer straight baton, which is, whether it's made out of wood, the old ones were made out of wood. I used to have a couple of those um, from when my father was in the military and he passed them on. He had a riot baton and um, had an old policeman's baton. And then these new ones that are made out of this plastic. These are hefty enough. These are strong enough that you can, you're going to crack skulls, break bones for self-defense. But the way you would use it purely for self-defense and not just to hurt somebody is you would put two hands on it and you would thrust and you would shove and you would punch to the sides. Come and you can come and you would have so much more control by using two hands and it becomes purely defensive weapon. If they have uh, something like a knife, you have reach advantage. You can put this between you and them. And if you have to, coming from your shoulder always, never swinging but from the shoulder, you could strike immediately, come through, thrust, down on top, in here, pushing and punching to the side. But that, and again, you can do that and you can see the expandable baton here is a little bit longer. But this is the number one self-defense tool. It's one of the most popular self-defense tools that you should avoid buying because you're almost never going to get one of these when you buy it off of Amazon or one of those other websites. You're going to get this knockoff piece of garbage, not even straight, that is not even going to be able to, I can't do that with this. I'll put a hole through that bag. I have to take it over here to the concrete floor. You can hear it just to put it away, just to put it back like that. This is very effective if you have nothing else. So I'd say, yeah, if you already have one of these, learn how to learn how to use it. You learn how to practice with it and how to do basic thrusts and strikes, but don't rely on it like uh, David asked if I could show you a come along method. David, I, I almost need somebody to have them come along. I would love, I'll love, I'd, I'll try to find somebody. And yes, I will, I, I would love to show you a lot of come along techniques. It's one of my favorite things to do. Pressure points, joint locks, and come along techniques. I like to use my hand. I have a really strong grip. I suggest you get a really strong grip so that you can apply pressure in certain ways to make people come along. There are ways that you can reach in and twist an arm up behind the back or, or uh, put pressure onto the, the nerves and the top of the arm or into the neck or behind the ear, or up under the nose, using a malt, again, mostly with your hands, but using your hands in a tool like this. And I was gonna show you the other one, the one we worked with earlier this week, the PR24, which I think becomes more superior than the straight baton because it has this side handle and it also is about the same length. You can see it's just a little bit, well, it's about the same, maybe almost the same if an inch or so shorter, but it's got this here, allowing you to use it almost as a hammer, you can reach, you can pull. There are a lot of come along techniques that you can do with this, David, pulling along, but, why I, I, I don't, unless you're gonna be a law enforcement officer, there's no reason for you to learn how to do come along techniques, in my opinion. And I saw, I saw this in a demonstration recently using the walking cane. Let me grab one real quick. That's one good, re one good reason to get the expandable baton is that you can reach for things and, and pull them to you. Um, but I saw someone using the expandable baton to show how to block, parry, uh, block, and then reach in and twist someone's arm up behind their back and turn and push them on the ground and do all these things. My personal recommendation, and also this 
kind of stuff here, which you can do with this here, which can be timed very easily. I know um, a lot of people disagree with me and say that's not true, but when we stress test it, that means when we suit up a little bit and we go with a padded weapon, a padded version of a stick or a cane, and I'm coming at you full force or you're coming at me full first force, you're gonna see that a lot of the assumptions that we make are not true when it comes to being hit with a stick. Uh, if, if you've ever been in a fight, if you've been in a lot of fights and you've been hit a lot, you learn how to take hits and you learn how to keep moving, especially if you understand the principles of self-defense and understand the principles of violence and using violence against somebody to stop violence. Now, with the come along techniques, learning how to force somebody to come and do what you want is only good if you're in law enforcement and you say, stand up, sit down, turn off the car, open the door, put your hands behind your back. You're giving commands because you have a reason to detain and there's a next step and a next step. You're gonna pat them down, you're gonna put the cuffs on them or you're gonna hog time, whatever it is that you have to do to detain somebody. But as a citizen, as somebody learning how to defend themselves, you don't want to detain somebody. You want to stick them on the ground, right? You want to put that through his face. You want to smash and maybe turn off his operating system. Let him fall to the ground like a sack of poo. Good afternoon, W9UFO. It's good to see you. You don't want to detain them and even um, you don't want to necessarily be holding them when the cops get there. Uh, I know that, that that happens every once in a while where that has to happen, especially somebody who's hopped up on drugs or whatever. And I've heard of situations like that. Um, but it, it, if, it, if it's you protecting yourself, your family, you want to hit them and get out of there. You don't, you don't want to be there. Let the cops come find you. And then you can look at the videotape together and say, look, that's where he attacked me. And I said, stop. I'll defend myself. And then you had to defend yourself. So I would rather learn how to do that. However, David, everybody else, Learn the come along techniques and the, the pressure points and joint locks because those are cool, those are fun, and you'll, you'll like doing that. Those are interesting. Those are like fun party tricks to show somebody how to twist the hand and, and grab the fingers and, you know, say, fingers. Number one come along technique, David, fingers, right? One is best, that'll break easily. Two, you won't break them so much, but you can, you can control, you can put them down. Three, you're not likely to break them as much but you can't apply pressure. Just think of pointing them where they don't, they're not supposed to go. Think about how they're not supposed to bend. Um, oh, Matthew, you're welcome. That's a, that's a big investment. And I don't get, it's not, it's, not a, it's not something that I'm getting money from. I get like cents, like 12 cents or something for that first link if you go and look at it, but, or if you purchase it. But the, the one that Matthew's talking about, that first link below, I have my um, clients, especially the older ones, who are not as physically strong and but they're getting stronger but they want to have something that's extremely effective and that thing punches like you would not believe and then the stuff that's in it spreads out <laughs> and the nice thing about it is you can create distance it's not a firearm it's based on that though it's more based on a uh, paintball gun imagine a paintball full of pepper spray well, that's basically what it is. And so you have, but it's, but it's designed in a way, it's made in a way that it lasts forever. And once you load it and you, then, you know, it comes with instructions, it tells you how to do it. But again, in demonstration, you can be much farther than this, up to 60 feet, 40 feet, depending on what your accuracy is, practice with it, comes with practice rounds, and you fire it. And now, unlike a can of pepper spray, you spray him, it's on him, it's on you, and you're both, you know, choking or whatever. I've had that done many times, but it's, and it's not pleasant. But this one, boom, boom, as long as you're not downwind, it goes out, like I said, it hits with, with a lot of force, but then, boom, so it stops their immediate uh, aggression and then uh, pushes them up, whatever. Uh, yeah, cor uh, cor any, the eyes, anytime you can control someone's head, you can control their body. So, as an extension of that, anytime you can stick your thumb into somebody's eyeball, you're gonna push them back. If you can stick your fingers into the eyes, you're gonna push them back. If you just reach out your hand and you just dig in anything you can and then you push, you don't have to be stronger than they are, you just have to be stronger than their eyeballs. And you know the eyeballs are not that strong. So always go for self-defense. 
if you have the opportunity to, and it's life or death, or you have to defend yourself, you go in to the face and, and reach and push, right? Reach and push and dig. Or go into the throat. That thumb into the throat, that can't, they can't, they're going to get the gag response. If they don't move, you're going to crush the windpipe. You crush the windpipe, they asphyxiate and die for self-defense. One of the th reasons why I don't want, I want you to see this, one of the most popular self-defense tools that you should never buy, the expandable baton, especially the garbage that you're going to see on Amazon listed as something else. And they never, they call it a window breaker. They'll say, well, that's the window breaker right there because they put a fake little tip in there. This probably wouldn't even break a window. This is a piece of garbage. Drop shipping, could, the, the, all the, if you know anything about drop shipping, Alibaba, AliExpress, all the garbage that comes off of there that people have made so much money with, just selling people ineffective garbage. There should be a law. There's not because people are making money and it's the same people. There we go, I had to put it away. It's the same people who are uh, <laughs> inter inter interfering with our elections around the world. Anyway, if you could get one of these, this is a much better option. This is the police officer's baton. But the reason that you can't get one of these is you have to be law enforcement to be even buy it. Most, uh, most quality uh, uniform shops or police officers, like law enforcement stores, they won't even they won't even let you look at it unless they see your ID that shows you're a police officer. They're not going to sell you this because they, they're conscientious and they know in a lot of places you can't carry this unless you're a police officer. There are very few jurisdictions around the country, in the United States especially, and then especially overseas, you just can't carry one of these. But you see these and they seem like, oh man, I, I need to get one of those expandable batons. They're great, but they're really not. And it's, even if you could get one, you talk to the old school law enforcement guys, they would say, I would much rather have my old school billy club or nightstick than, yeah, and, and the, even this, the stick is illegal. Even this is, again, it's not, it's not legal in a lot of jur gotta make that a little bit stronger, but not legal in a lot of places. You can't carry one of these, can't even have this because this is also considered to be law enforcement tool, a weapon, but we know that if you turn this, if you train with, let me see if I can find one, this, you can cut this to the same length as this. This basically is the Japanese Tanbo. The Tanbo is the shorter stick. Right now, this is the length of the Hanbo, the walking stick. And I can use this very effectively as a walking stick. In fact, you might prefer this length, this 36 inch length. But if you wanted to work with, that's probably 28. You work with 28. 18 inches is more of the Tonbo length. So you come down another 10 inches. Learn how to work with that. And practice learning how to fight with sticks for self-defense. And then you can't, it doesn't have to necessarily be this. These are nice because they're made so well and they're so dense that they hit with so much force. However, and I, I think those retail for 20, 30, 40 bucks, depending on the, the, make, the, the manufacturer, this is a dowel rod from Lowe's that may, uh, retails for like four bucks. And I think this one is, yeah, this one's oak. So maybe seven bucks. But this, you can learn how to do all those same motions, striking with one hand or two hands, and learn how to defend yourself and you can make it yourself with a little bit of sandpaper and some uh, mineral oil or linseed oil and defend yourself with just a walking stick. And if you wanted to have a little bit shorter, and my suggestion is that you would train with all lengths of stick and learn how to fight with sticks for self-defense. Even fighting with, with two sticks at the same time or learn how to fight with one. And always remember using two hands always gives you more accuracy, power, gives you a better um, balance and in, in you're gonna, not going to get knocked over. When you do, take, always take kind of a, a lowered position, a lowered stance. If you drop your center of gravity a little bit, it's harder for them to move you back. If you drop your center of gravity, you'll be more explosive when you come in. They come out with a weapon or a knife, drop your center of gravity. It's a pattern interrupt for them. And then you can step up and under their hand, 
come in and thrust with those hands. And so I would say this is the most popular self-defense tool you should avoid. You should never buy. Instead, spend less than $10, get yourself a stick from Lowe's, cut it to the length you want. Um, oh, Alante says, what weapon would I use for the zombie apocalypse? I would have them strapped all over, right? And the idea in the zombie apocalypse, let me see if I have it right here, is that you, um, you, got, you got to take out the head, right? But that's funny because a lot of people, Aliante, a lot of people think that the zombie apocalypse, or they, 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 they see the zombie apocalypse as a metaphor for unprepared mass, the unprepared masses, the sheeple. The sheeple have no plan. The sheep, the sheep of, of the world, the middle class, the disconnected, they have no plan. They follow. They do what they're told. They don't question. They put the diaper on their face. They stick the, the, uh, the thing in their arm, they, you know, which changes their DNA, whatever, whatever is happening. They, they turn on the TV at night and they say, oh, yeah, Putin, that bad guy, Darth Vader. Oh, yeah, Zelensky, his superhero. And I'm not saying that one is and one isn't, but they just go with, they go with the plan that somebody else has for them. Those are the sheeple. And so the zombie apocalypse is a metaphor for the sheeple. When the stuff hits the fan and when the grid goes down and when there's not enough food to eat because the prices are so high and everything is, is out of reach for the average person, the middle class no longer exists because the elites have wiped us out, wiped them out. <laughs> then the sheeple become the zombies <sighs> walking around looking for something to eat. And if you've got it, you better be able to protect it. And if you have, you, and so that's what preparation does, prep, prep, preppers. You see these preppers and they were made fun of for years until the, the diaper thing came out of Wuhan. And then all of a sudden people started to say, well, wait a minute, maybe, maybe I should put a little, you know, remember the to, there's no toilet paper in the stores. They ran out of this, they ran out of that. And it, and it hasn't ended and it's starting to get worse. At, watch what happens because uh, Russia and Belarus and uh, Ukraine supply 40% of the world's wheat. Watch what happens to the, the, the cost of wheat and sunflower oil and all of these other commodities which are coming out of that part of the world, which now will not come from there. Watch how the prices of everything keeps going up and up and up. And then you can imagine that the zombie apocalypse, when you think about Morgan from The Walking Dead, and Morgan from The Walking Dead is what inspires so many people to learn how to defend themselves with a hiking stick or a walking stick. They want to learn how to fight like Morgan from The Walking Dead because he learns Aikido and he learns how to use the martial arts Joe, which is this size weapon. So Aliante, to answer your question, after all of that, the basic idea is that the sheeple, the people who are hungry and, and haven't prepared, they didn't buy toilet paper the first time. They, they still don't have any toilet paper, but worse than that, they can't afford gas in their car. They can't afford uh, food in their house. Their jobs are gone. And, then, and that's not going to happen because God will take care of us. But if it did, if it did, then you would want to be prepared with a self-defense weapon like this, because whether it's a zombie or it's just a bad criminal trying to take something from you, you got to take out the head. If you control the head, you control the body, knock them out. Um, EDC sticks, Doug says. Yeah. So everyday carry. So these are the everyday carry sticks. I say in order of importance, learn how to use the medium sized staff, about 54 inches, right? You learn how to use this. Second, learn how to use the 36 inch walking stick. Third, go for a set. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you some, Doug sent me, Doug sent me a lot of this stuff. Doug's a uh, former law enforcement, full, still martial artist. He has accumulated some really cool stuff over the years. He's been generous enough to share them with me. Get yourself a pair of Kali sticks, right? Arnis, Kali, Eskrima. You can do a lot with two sticks. You knock one out of your hand and you go with one stick. You can still create distance. But the idea in a zombie apocalypse is that there's a lot of them coming, right? So multiple attackers. You want to hit this guy and this guy and that guy and this guy and the one behind you over here. And you can do that very effectively with that medium-sized martial arts stick. This gives you reach advantage. 
keep this guy back, go through that guy, smash this guy in the face, take his head up, and you just go, right? And that's a little bit of fan fantasy, awkward cat. But again, like I said, the um, two long screwdrivers, sure. Yeah, but then you gotta be really close because screwdrivers aren't that long. I would rather have this distance than the screwdriver distance. Just a personal choice. Plus, I am an expert at throwing knives and screwdrivers and things like that. So I would probably use that as a, I would throw it at this guy and then I'd take that second screwdriver, throw it at that guy, and then the rest of them, I would be doing this. Plus, I don't like the gory and the gluts and all that stuff. So something like this uh, is my choice. And, and again, mostly that's just a joke and that's a big, you know, um, metaphor. But again, the metaphor, and you don't have to take it to that extreme, just don't be caught unprepared. You know, put, put, a, put a few things aside and, um, you know, invest a little bit of your money and buy, you know, a couple extra cans of this, a couple extra boxes of that, whatever it is, and get this stuff that you, you use. People ask me all the time, what about MREs? As a person who's eaten my fair share of nasty MREs, meals ready to eat, I don't recommend them. I don't recommend them for so many reasons. But one is it's just a huge waste of money and two, you're never gonna eat half of it because it's disgusting and until you're super hungry. And it's just, it's not a good value exchange, right? So instead of MREs, write out the things that you really need, the things you like to eat and buy those and then get in the habit, expand your pantry a little bit, do a little bit at a time and then expand what you can. If you started a while ago, you bought things at a discount and you're using them now like we are. If you're just now starting to see the writing on the wall, you're all, we're all already paying so much more, so it makes it more difficult because it's so much more expensive to plan for the future. But because inflation is probably gonna do this for a while, if you buy it now for $12 a box instead of the $4 it was last year, but now it's 12, it's gonna be 18 or 22 in six months to a year. So set a few aside and then that, that'll help you uh, stretch your money out anyway. So just take some of those things. I was gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that on this channel from time to time. Some of the things that I do pr to prepare because I think preparation for self-defense and preparation for uh, keeping your body strong and healthy and then preparation for whatever might be coming on the, the world stage, right? Things that are outside of our control. You can't control what's happening to us, but we can control what we do about it. And that's on martial arts. That's always been the essence of martial arts and self-defense is preparation. You guys have been awesome. I have a, a group of young men I gotta teach and I will see you in just a little bit. Thank you.